Infinite Eye Care. Dr. Tom Johnson in the studio with us. Um, are there some age-specific symptoms, Doc, that usually progress into something else, something perhaps that we have not covered here? Um, well, yeah, I think uh, I think one thing that's kind of important that I that I kind of stand on a leg when I'm talking to my parents or my my patients, kids, kids uh, uh, parents, is we like to see the children at that you know that we talked earlier about the uh, vision screening status for form in about uh, six to twelve months. But we also, and so does the AOA, the American Optometric Association, recommends seeing kids at, at uh, age three and then again at age five right before kindergarten and then every year or two after that, depending on the symptoms that they're having. Um, but the kind of reasons, the reasons that we want to see these kids at that at that younger age is because um, you might not see all the things at that early age that you might see at three and you might not see all the things at age three that you might see at age five and and things as you know if you had prescription glasses when you were in the fourth grade you went back and they'd say that your prescription would change and you needed new glasses Mm -hmm. got out of those horn rim glasses and got into something a little more cool looking hopefully i suppose (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) but uh the kind of things that we watch for then is you know some of the more common things that you'll see are that we see are you know the nearsighted kids the kids that can't see far away and then the far-sighted kids that, and the, that's the trickiest population of, of eye conditions that we see is not the kids that are the, the obvious where they can't see stuff far away, but it's the kids that can see stuff far away. And of course they can read okay to a certain extent, but their eyes are working like a son of a gun trying to me to, to, to compensate for that farsightedness. And so those are the ones that I, I, we actually find the most benefit from that they would not have known, been known for, for during the screenings that they do at school is because sure. their eyes are working so hard to read that it forces their eyes to cross, and that can create reading difficulties. And that's probably the biggest area of population I feel like we have a benefit to an unknown population for. Absolutely. Um, how important is the eye and good eyesight when it comes to kids learning at school? Well, typically, uh, the, the statistics say that you know eighty, eighty some percent of your of your learning comes from visual sources, and so uh, I would say it's probably one of the more important ones out there. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you stop to think about that. You you, you learn to read as a child. If you can't read, you're in real trouble, right? Um, and it, it's just, it just seems so amazing to me that. Uh, uh, we have not had this conversation before, so we're going to have to have you back again, I hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about um, um, the fact that I happen to see or notice, I guess, a lot more younger children in glasses. Now, is that because there are so many more kids running around, or is it that technology is really helping you guys uh, uh, catch a lot more problems or both? Or I, I would say, yes, I'll say both, but I would say part of the reason for that is just education. I mean, kid, parents are finally being taught about things through their either their pediatric uh, health care system mm-hmm. people like me and other other doctors in my profession are, are going out and trying to educate the kids about it you know trying to make sure the vision screenings that they're doing at schools are are, are as good as they can possibly do be so they can catch what they can find out mm-hmm. but uh, and I think maybe even the teachers education uh, teachers are, are looking at the signs and symptoms yeah. of these kids and so they're trying to find out and and if they have something that they see in the child then they'll re- make that recommendation but I would say that uh, uh, you know the the platform that I will and always will stand on is can you get the children to just instead of guessing when they need care why don't we just have them seen by a professional that knows if they need care and what to do about it right from the beginning? Yeah, because we're rolling the dice, right, on some pretty important stuff here. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, and, and this goes all the way into adulthood. I mean, uh, there's been a few examples where I've had patients coming in that are, you know, in their 40s and, you know, the only symptom that they had is, Doc, I see a little blurry, you know, and that uh, blurry vision is might be one thing. But in one particular example, I use this example often is because it was such an impact on my mind, is that this person came in and he had glaucoma uh, that was leading to about 35, 40 percent of his vision that's already gone. And there was nothing I could do about it. Now. But had you caught it earlier... Yeah, right. What what right. could have happened? Oh, we, we we would have been able to prevent the damage, and that's the big thing with some of the right. health issues out there, especially glaucoma. Well, and especially if you look at kids. I mean, if you can catch something early and prevent the progression of something, I mean, th- there you go. What about, uh, tell me about the reading bug program, because this sounds pretty cool to me. Well, uh, 
if you if I can give any brainstorm ideas to anybody in my family, I'm going to thank my wife for this one. Is when we first opened up Infinite Ike here in 2009, and we were drawing up some marketing ideas, and and she threw this idea idea together for me, and it's turned into one of the most fun activities we do every year. We uh, we hand out uh, a little piece of flyer paper to every one of the as many kids as, as we can in the area, both uh, St. Cloud, Sock Rapids, St. Cl- uh, and Sartell. And we we hand those out to the kids, and they take them home to their parents. And it talks a little bit about the Reading Bug program, and what it is is basically there's a there's a there's a term in the in the school, and most teachers would hurt, know this. It's called the the summer slide, right? And that means, of course, you know you're you're going along, you're learning pretty good, and then all of a sudden you take three months off, and you'll lose a certain percentage of that knowledge in that th- time because you're just not doing anything other than goofing around and playing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what? they've discovered is that you know to have a child learn to to continue reading throughout the summer can help maintain that knowledge to a certain level so they don't lose everything that they gained uh you know kind of like they say if you don't if you don't use it you lose it so we just thought why don't we create a program that gives kids an incentive to do something during the summer other than just let that summer slide take its full effect and Mm -hmm. uh um so Giving this program to these kids, they we give them a little modified incentive to uh, to do some reading at home, and they come in with their reading bug schedules. and uh, And if you know, for the little little kids, we'll actually have the program where the parents can read to the children because if they don't know how to read yet, they they are not going to read books, but their parents can read to them. But from about that kindergarten up to sixth grade level or fifth grade level they can actually be uh, reading some books and then actually get credit for it and then when they bring that into our office they get a little prize and we we've we've contracted with about you know half a dozen local vendors that have agreed to participate in this program with us and we give them a little little free breadsticks or we give them a free skating pass or free bowling pass and things like that and so and some of the kids that's been so funny one of my favorite examples is this one little kid that and 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 by the way we we give away a grand prize and first year it was just one grand prize now we've decided to split it up into three separate terms both june july and august all three of them get a a a grand prize with a, a backpack filled with you know goodies and stuff sure but this one little kid, this first second, first or second year we did it, he came in and he wanted to read that. He wanted to win that prize in the biggest way, and uh, and he, I think he went home and filled out the form like maybe six or seven times. And every time he came in and he said, "Am I going to win this, Doctor Tom?" And I'm gonna, and th- and believe it or not, it was not a fixed a fixed uh, drawing. Yeah. That, that lucky kid got this prize. That is cool. So he was happy. That is cool, <laughs> Doc. We've only got about a minute or so left, but is the Affordable Care Act going to have a positive? Impact? impact on eye care for these kids well we we hope and we think that it is simply because of the fact that now the uh, the uh, the affordable health care act uh mandat- makes it mandatory that kids have uh eye, a, a comprehensive eye exam that's covered by their insurance and as you know most uh, all, all adults are supposed to have ins- insurance health insurance for themselves and for their children so now if we have a health insurance that covers a comprehensive eye exam Really, there's no excuse for you not to bring in your children and have a professional decide whether there's help you decide whether there's something you can do to pr- prevent vision loss. Absolutely. InfiniteEyeCare.com, your website? That's correct. InfiniteEyeCare.com. The phone number, 257 4990. Dr. Tom Johnson, thank you so much for coming in today. It's great to meet you. And it sounds like you're having a ball over there at Infinite Eye Care. It's a party every day at yeah. Infinite Eye Care. <laughs> Absolutely. Taking care of those kids, that's got to be a hoot. Keeps you young, doesn't it? You bet. AM 1450, FM 1033, KNSI.